Hello, I'm Jerry Lintner and this is State of the Town, our monthly show when we sit with our boss, the first selectman, Lisa Hevner, and get brought up to date on the state of the town. Hi, boss. Hey, Jerry. How are you? <laughs> well, I am fantastic. And I had the opportunity um, at the senior luncheon. I was supposed to be able to give just a little bit of a talk, but they said they had somebody much more important and that she would probably take a long time yakking away. And to my surprise, it was our boss, our, our queen, our first selectman, Lisa Hevner. And I was, well, I mean, having known you a couple years now and seen you in action, I know you're quite a sincere person. Uh, and seeing you talk to them, I thought it was so candid, so real. And it was a, and I've tried to speak to them before. It's not an easy group to speak to because they're there for their weekly social and to have lunch. But they really were listening because they could tell you were quite sincere. You wanted their input. And you wanted it not only on the senior center, but on the budget. Absolutely. And, I mean, I really respect you for going and almost pleading with people to give input on the budget because... How many of you are thinking, oh, my goodness, I don't want to watch this. I think I'll flip the channel. Because it does sound dry. But, you know, it makes a big difference. And this town has a big, big challenge this year. And at the helm is our boss, Lisa. So <laughs> talk a little bit about the budget, or actually a lot. I will. Okay. And, Jerry, and Jerry, thank you for doing this. Uh, you know, budget conversations are tough. And you're right, sometimes people think they're boring. But... At the local level. They're critical. They're critical because sometimes people forget what local government is. It's everything that touches you, your life every day. It's yep. your roads. It's your police. Oh, it, roads. Didn't we get a road we, grant? Uh, we, well, we get periodic ones, yes. I thought I just saw that in the paper somewhere, a grant for road maintenance. I think we talked about that once before, so we, that'd be good. We did, but oh. it, but it's your roads, right? Your yeah. senior center, the library, social services. It's the town services. So if you get a dog permit, it's a license. You get married, death certificate. It's your here. taxes. Engineering. It's your mill rate. It's your mill rate. But but more importantly, you know, when people talk about taxes, sometimes they view them as remote. But at the local level, they're things that touch your life every oh, day. Oh yeah. They're the things you see, you sit on, you walk on, the sidewalks, your roads. Well, I remember parks. at one point, I think it, the situation has worsened even, this goes a number of years back, that the figure was for state taxes that a resident from Simsbury pays, we get back a nickel on the dollar. And I say that only to make the point, well, then how does all this get financed? And you said it. Yeah. It's, local. Most so this is like people sitting down looking at their own personal budget. It's very personal. It is. It is. And most, you're right. You know, when you think about how do we pay for the things that I just listed, it's almost all, uh, you know, your property tax. And one of the things about a property tax is it's a very regressive tax. And what that means is it doesn't care about your income. You're going to pay right. whatever your house is worth. You're is going to pay what it. regressive means? It, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, now I learned something today. Regressive means it doesn't pay any attention to your income. Right. Got and, it. Which is what a property tax does, right? So if you're retired and your income is staying flat yeah. and your home value is going up, you're going to pay more even though your income isn't. Right? Whose home value is going up? I think some are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're starting to see some trends. We're not back to where we were in 2008. But, no. you know, this is, th I mean, Thankfully, entering the budget season, we're very fortunate to live in a community that people want to come to. And yes. that does help support our property values. But property values, you know, when you have a taxing system that relies heavily on one tax, property values, which ours does, we yep. do get some state aid and some fee um, uh, income, but it's almost all property tax. And when you have that, that's a really a bad system of taxation. Generally, when you have a, to have a healthy community, you want three prongs of taxation. You want property tax, income tax, and sales tax, because that helps you weather the ups and downs of the craziness. You so shouldn't. you're proposing local income and sales tax? I am not, but <laughs> no. You'd be so dead in the street. <laughs> but you know what? That is a healthier taxing system. Yes, I and understand. One of the, and one of the things that, um, and because of that, one of the things the state is proposing this year is to take 5% of the sales tax and redistribute it to the towns to sort of help with the, that really? three-pronged approach. Absolutely. 
So, and, and Sunsbury's uh, pro rata of that would be about $775,000. Okay. So that may come back to the towns in the forms of sales tax. And why do you do that? Because it helps take away some of the re the regressive nature of the property tax. Right. Because that is, you know, you, it's a little more discretionary. You don't have to buy things, right? And it seems in my mind it's a lot more fair to people who have been here longer, who built this town and what it is, and now, well, maybe on fixed incomes that don't keep pace with inflation. Well, come on. they they built the place. There should be some consideration for that. You know, and you're so right. And I hear this over and over again, especially among our senior population. I've been here all these years. I, you know, my kids aren't in the schools anymore. And I'm paying this regressive property tax, mm -hmm. right? My income's staying flat or going down, depending yeah. on how yep. their investments did. And that's one of the biggest things that keeps me up at night. They're worried about whether they can stay in town. So you need to approach this coming year Slash, slash, slash. What are you going to slash? How are you going to do that? Well, you know. Wait, I heard the employees have stepped up and that they're contributing more to their own health costs. That's a noble thing to do. You know, our, our town employees have been wonderful. And working with town staff and, you know, collective bargaining, they really have stepped up. So they are increasing their contribution to pensions. At their in, they've increased their... Uh, contributions to OPEB, which are other post-employment benefits, which sort of health. And so they have really, really stepped up. So, so thank you, guys. Really, thank you. No, I mean, if you see town staff, it is worth thanking them okay. because they have they are definitely contributing. And it's not like at the state, our, our guys have really stepped up, which is why we aren't in some of the difficult situations that the state is in. Well, one of the challenges that I felt you must have is like when I heard you talking to the seniors and all, you were you're quite sincere in wanting their input. And I'm not so naive to know it's only seniors that you try to solicit no, the right. information from. But I bet it's hard to get it. And the opportunities for people to give their input, there are actually a lot of them, or at least there used to be in the workshops, but they don't get great at attendance. No. So, how do you go about gathering, you know, what priorities you put on what activities and terms when you have to trim back? Well, How do you do that? I think that's a great question. And what I do is I talk to people. I just pull them aside. Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? I'll email friends. I'll call friends and say, yeah, I was just at a Super Bowl party, and I asked everyone, what do you think? What should our priorities be? I try and reach oh, out wow, to people. Oh, wow, did they know you were coming? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're all, they all want to be helpful because, okay. you know, we make better decisions when we understand the community's priorities. Um, this year, you know, we're, it, I'm gonna, not going to lie to you, Jer. It's a it's a tough budget season. It's a very it's probably the toughest budget. It is the toughest budget season. So what does that mean? It means that we had increased health costs yeah. that are going to really. We have increased negotiated salaries, and because we're growing, we're we're starting to grow. Actually, really, our, we are one percent. Well, what was it when I started counting up the apartments that you mentioned right. were coming online? And roughly, it was like, well, it's at least 600 or more than that. There are a number coming online, and I don't have the full number, but yeah, you saw Dorset Crossing. There's some stuff going at Powdered Forest. There's the Garden Homes at the South End. That's about 180. Yeah, uh, and there's some, all of those over by Millwrights. Mm -hmm. You know, there are lots. I mean, so I just. And some by like, Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yeah, and I thought, boom, boom, boom. Wow. Where are all these people coming from? Well, maybe some are downsizing, but so, then. It sounds like actually some young people are coming in from outside the town, and that'd be nice. That's uh, that, and I think that's exactly right. We are seeing young professionals who are attracted to the lifestyle in Simsbury because we, you know, we've invested in quality yep. life here, and people are coming to take advantage of that. Our bike trails, our downtown restaurants, the great schools. You're starting to some of that is paying off. That is economic development. Our that's clubs, what brings the dealing the. Strippers. No, we don't do that. No. <laughs> and we're not oh. going there. <laughs> we will not be doing that. For oh, okay. So don't. those young people are not no. coming. They're not interested. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, but but with all that development comes increased service needs, right? Yeah. So we had to increase our police department last year. We're paying for over two years to police officers. Oh, so some of those people have come. Yeah. No. It's just regular, <laughs> just regular routine calls. 
So, so you want to you want to what you want to do as development comes, you want to make sure your services are keeping up with that development, right? Okay. So what are some of the tough choices you're confronted with, and how did they come up? Like the the staff from independent areas who are responsible for certain services say, well, okay, if I had to cut by a certain percentage, this is what I'd recommend cutting. Um, do they fight amongst themselves? They do not what? fight. Everybody's very respectful. It's a very hard process to go through. Well, I will you can be respectful and still yeah, fight. No, they don't fight. But oh. they do have, you know, substantive conversation. The thing I've seen with our staff, and this is the second year doing this, everything they present to me is reasonable. Nobody's asking for anything outrageous or extravagant. It's all to meet needs. So what are some of the trade-offs that have to be considered? Like, activities or level of service or what are those? Well, I'm not going to go into specifics because I'll present those to the Board of Selectmen, but I'll talk generally to you what's out there. Yeah, I was just going to have to wait, Jim. We're still in the process of deciding. But let me tell you in well, general what is... what are you considering to decide on? Uh, well, I'll tell Come you... Come on, we want to scoop, don't we? Why should the board get the information first? We're the public. We, the people, by the people, for the people. So what are some of the specific <laughs> trade-offs that are being considered? Well, I'm not considered. I'm not done reviewing the budgets yet, so I don't okay. know yet. But um, what I will say, and the governor sort of laid this out nicely, I thought, for the state, is when we're in the process of budgeting, so there are going to be decisions to be made, right? Do we want to keep the level of services flat or improving? And to do that, you can't are, do that. are you willing to increase your taxes? Or are we? Or I don't know. That's what we're going to have conversations about. That's what I need to hear from all of you about. Okay. But the other option. <laughs> oh, I think I know what the answer was. <laughs> okay. The other option is if you if you're dead set on keeping taxes flat, then you have to talk about what services you want to reduce. Yep. Because the one thing um, this town has done and really worked well with the boards of selectmen, the public, and the referendum votes, and department staff is we've kept budgets very very basically flat for the last eight years wow. in response to tw 2008. You know, there have been little... But books. I haven't heard complaints and service levels being dropped. Well, no, and we, because what we've done is we've used every avenue we've had, you know, pursued grants, done every efficiency we could. We've really worked hard to squeeze every dollar um, we can from what we have and use as, you know, a few individuals, but we're kind of at a point. We got a crumpled, dry dollar, can't get any more juice out of it. Pretty much. So tough choices. Yeah, I think that, I, you know, and I think it's important for the public to understand that. we have, But, you know, I hope the public feels that, you know, they've had the opportunity cost of using. Well, how do they, money. now this gets approved in July, right? Or no, it's approved in May. May. For enactment in July, it goes mm -hmm. in effect, and it'll uh, go to referendum. Absolutely. Okay, but like if somebody out there listening says, oh, "I hope they're not going to cut this or cut that," how do they come to a forum, and is there a schedule of that to there express is. their opinion, or can they do it on the town site as long as they do it in a respectful, non-threatening way? Well, yeah, you know, we take criticism and, you know, compliments equally. So people should really? let us know what they think. Oh, this is great news. Okay. <laughs> Not from you, though, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Only compliments from you. <laughs> okay. No, no, but seriously, we do what you can write to any member of the Board of Selectmen. You can call me. You can, uh, you know, I'll meet anyone for coffee. Or like I came to the Senior Center and spoke to the Senior yeah. Center. And a any member of the Board would be willing to do that. We're all very willing to talk to people. But I, I will be presenting my, the first selectman's budget, to the Board of Selectmen on February 29th at 5.30 in the main meeting room. So that'll be the first time I talk about, okay, here's my recommendations. Okay, and then the pattern, as I seem to remember, there used to be the workshops, which I'm assuming at this point are probably over. No, no, they, that's when they start. So oh. they'll start oh, after they that. After that, they Well, start. I present, I give my presentation. I work with department heads to put together my recommended first selectman's budget. Okay. And then we go to the board of selectmen, and the board of selectmen meets with department heads to hear uh, their presentations. And there's usually add backs or reductions done at that point. And those are based on policy decisions. And then are there public workshops? The, well, pu the public can come to any of them to and any speak of those. So yeah, those get speak. posted. Mm -hmm. on the town site yes on what subjects they are it used yeah. to be 
kind of the budget was grouped by these three activities or areas would be discussed this right. night or whatever. Okay, because once it goes to referendum, now mm -hmm. this is my impression, and I don't know a more practical way to do it, but it's yay or nay. That's right. So the chance for input is now. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And, and so it's, you know, what do you care about? I mean, when I think about crafting a budget, and I'll get back to you, but <laughs> when I think about crafting a budget, there are sort of three buckets I think about. Okay. There's the must spends, right? And those the are must the must spend. Spend, not the dust bin. No, the, the must, must spend. spend. Okay. And and the must spends are contractual obligations, so collective bargaining contracts, any contracts, service contracts we have out there that we've agreed that we're gonna pay. Right? Utility costs, we gotta keep the lights on, right? Yeah. Then there are the should spends. And the should spends might be something like economic development. If you spend a little money now, you might bring back a bigger return. Or investments in energy upgrades, you spend a little money now and you'll get savings within you know three or four years there. Or it might be paint the house now the instead, of, yeah, instead of yeah. Yeah, preventative maintenance so that you don't have to replace the siding later. Those are the kind of things you know, economic development, I think I said, I put in yeah. there because you want to try and grow the pie because the bigger the pie grows, uh, the easier it is to distribute the taxes. And then there are the want to, send, want to spend. And those are services that we like, that our community expects. And those Why are- Why wouldn't they be shoulds? Well, some of them are. And I okay. think you raise, oh, an, okay. you raise an important point there because I think um, the devil's in the details. One person might look at, well, this is a want to spend. So and someone is the else, art, you know. What? Both the devil and the art are in the details. Yeah. Details, very exciting environment. <laughs> the devils and the arts. <laughs> okay, so now but, but we're that's in where the, the debate want comes. to, right. want to. Right, and that might be additional services you want to offer. So these aren't rank one, two, three. There are no. three categories, all of which need to be considered and balanced and out. Weighed. And weighed. And what I th might think is a must spend, you might think is a should spend or I, I, I want to talk about the want to spends. What's currently on the want to list? Well, that's you know we're starting to get those uh, out there, and I'm not going to go into specifics right now. Oh but no, you're Lisa, killing me! I know. No, this is like I'm still getting the information, Jerry. Oh well, you can't give us a little insight into some of it. What's coming in? Well, obviously, one is, is the one is the senior center, right? Oh, let's talk you know, about the now, senior center. Now, is that a want to spend, should spend, or we need to spend? Yes. And I think depending on who you talk to, um, you're going to get a different perspective on that, right? Some people are going to say this is a must need. Some are going to say no, we should because we know the senior population is going to double in the next 15 years. And some people are going to say, well, no, that's really a want and spend. So where that plays out for the public, it, it's important for us to hear. I'm thinking. Just as an idea, mm -hmm. that might be a way to solve a, partially a number of problems. Okay, I'm, I'm like on. In the senior center, mm -hmm. we have a large communal area. We do. Like a dorm mm. or like army barracks, mm. cubicles. So everybody has their little semi private space. You know, they can go wherever they want during the day or anything. Um, there's lots of opportunity for close neighbors and friends. And the cost to them compared to like rent or mortgage payments or property tax would be way down. Uh, well, you are the first person to suggest that to me. <laughs> okay, well, see, if think about that. Some of you are like, you know, flower children. Wouldn't that be fun? You know, like communal living again? <laughs> well, you know, th that raises two interesting points to me. Uh, the first is, do you remember back when we had the October 2011 storm when everyone was oh, staying yeah. at the... Um, it was at, fun, at the, huh? People did have... It, it, it really was a communal um, getting together and camaraderie there, yeah, although it was a very difficult situation, but people really did form yeah, important see. bonds there. But in terms of the housing situation, I think you raised just a critical point there. One of the things yep. that we're hearing over and over again is I want to stay in Simsbury, but there are very di limited choices as to where seniors can downsize to. So how do we plan for that in the future? What you, and, and it's a very tough situation. Do you look at more tax abatements or there's a tax deferral program? Out there, uh, Ridgefield uses it where you, you once you reach a certain age, you can defer taxes until you sell the house. That's one way to let 
senior stay in, that might be something we want to explore. Uh, we already offered senior tax abatements, they're income based, so if you qualify you can um, get a reduction in your taxes, same with veterans. But the question is how do you support those who want to stay in Simsbury when their incomes are flat? Yeah. And I think that that's something we're going to be grappling with over the next few years. And it's something I hear over and over again. But, you know, and we are going to have to get creative on solutions. I don't think yours is the way we're going to go, but, but it's a good start, Jer. <laughs> Michael, roll your boat ashore. Come on, have you so much fun. And in the summer, we could go out inside and have a fire and do some wars and things like that. But the other point you make, which is, I think, Listen, a great one. Listen, if I one. have any support for this at all, give Lisa a call. Her number is 860-658-3230. That's 860-658-3020. Michael Rowe. Well, you don't know. You might get a lot I of calls. I might. I mean, and what would it take? Just 60 people? That would be huge for those 60 people who otherwise might have to move. But, but the other thing you raised, Jerry, which I think is right, one of the things, um, having looked at a, what kind of supports we should give our seniors over the years as they age in place, most of it is camaraderie. Are there opportunities for social interactions and avoiding isolation? So that is one of the things you know, our senior center focuses on, giving opportunities for social interactions and camaraderie. Get them licensed in babysitting. And then, where both of the parents work, they could bring their children to the communal center and pay these people to babysit. You, you know, Jerry, I, I'm glad you raised that. There are models out there in senior centers where seniors And do, they mix with, with the generations. Mix, that's right. It's, and that's one of the things research has shown is that the more there's intergenerational interactions, the better it is for the entire community, not just for seniors, but for our young people who really enjoy that connection. You're seeing that with Bernie Sanders right now, right? He's a senior, and a lot of his support is from the millennials. They Bernie enjoy looks older than I do. Well, yeah. he is a little bit older than I am. <laughs> but, but there is this, I think people really value interactions and Isn't intergenerational. Isn't that awful, ageism? Remember Der Alta? He was like the no. president or whatever for Germany for many years. And he was had to be 150. And that's why they called him Der Alta. It means the old one. And uh, I mean, other countries recognize <laughs> the wealth of experience older people have. Yeah. Whereas I think in our country, there's a tendency to, Ooh, getting in the 50s, probably losing. <laughs> no, I have to respectfully disagree. I've seen a lot of really? the seniors, yeah, a lot of them mentor children. You haven't what children. heard yeah. what people have whispered behind your back about that Lisa, she's getting up there. <laughs> I have, well, it's true, I am getting up there. But, but the fact is a lot of our seniors do have a tremendous wealth of experience Absolutely. and knowledge that they Absolutely. can offer. And when we talked, with the programming expert we had who did an evaluation of Sinsbury said one of the things that Sinsbury seniors we can anticipate they're going to want going into the future are meaningful opportunities to volunteer because that's the type of community we are. Yeah. So we want to make sure that there are those opportunities for seniors because really what is life? It's not, you know, do you focus on happiness or do you focus on doing something meaningful? Oh dear. I agree. <laughs> really, you want to? I agree. Really, you, know, you have to live a life of meaning. I think so. And you know, you like to leave the place better than yeah. it was before you were here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your wife is doing that, right? With the flower bridge. She's Why do you always say that Jan is doing it? Like I do and it you too. too. And so you why don't you say like, and you and Jan? You and Jan. All right. Okay, I apologize. Right. For or that. you can say Jan and you, whichever Either you want to say. Okay. So we got old people taking care of babies now, and that's going to give them some extra money. And they're living communally, so their expenses are way down. And you have just gabbed up a storm. We're almost out of time. So are there any other budget things you want to touch on really quickly? Like growth. Which ones? Okay, growth. Growth. We are seeing, for the first time in many years, a, an increase in our grand list growth. And we're also seeing an increase in building permits. So that those are good signs. That's the beginning of growth. Because when you think about your taxes, it's not just about a percent increase in the budgets. It, you have to balance that against what growth you're seeing. So all these apartments are good. 
they're making us more money rather than costing us more money. But they are money. costing us money, too, sure. because we have to pay for services. Yeah. 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 Tough but, job deciding between all of this. It, you know, it's going to be a tough year. And I, I, I you know, I just... And it's going to be a complicated year because a lot of what the state is doing, I, we didn't even get to touch on the 2.5% cap that's coming up in either 2018 or 2017 and the implications for the town budget. But there will be implications We're all there. getting state caps? No. Are they like blue and white and gold? They're going to limit the amount each budget can increase at the local level to 2.5%, which... They're not the boss of us. Well, you know what? A lot of people are saying that it's a disenfranchisement of your vote. That's yeah, exactly that's one of the things. that's absolutely right. I'm going to call Don, <laughs> the, the Donald, and <laughs> let him know about that. Uh, Lisa, sorry, we've run out of time. But uh, given the last message, why the budget input is important. Well, uh, because we make better decisions when we hear from you. At the end of the day, it starts out as the first selectman's budget, then it goes to the board of selectmen, then the board of finance. But at the end of the day, it's your budget, and that becomes your budget at referendum. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Chair. And thank all of you. And we'll see you again next month on State at the Town. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.